Welcome back to Between the Pylons. I'm John Camacho. Thank you so much for watching. Today we are talking about Clavon Chason, edge rusher out of LSU. And before we get into that real quick, I do want to apologize for the backdrop behind me. Uh, this is the third video I'm recording uh, with this backdrop and hopefully the last. I do plan on getting all that cleaned up. It has been a crazy week for the rest of the world and an especially crazy week for me. Uh, so certain things had to get moved around. I wasn't able to post some videos for a couple days uh so i apologize for all that but we are back uh again thank you so much for watching and i'm super excited to talk about uh clavon chase on because i believe he's the first defensive player i'm doing on this channel uh first of many hopefully i'm actually really hoping that the nfl just pushes back the draft just so i have more content to create like uh which i'll be creating content after after the draft but uh i i, I so much i love so much talking about the draft so i'd love to have a little bit extra time to do that um but anyway uh so with clavon chase on i i really believe that in a couple of years i might have to completely rework my uh, program and he might be one of those players that i uh, that i model it after uh, you know when i built this i used certain players from the nfl certain archetypes to model certain things out of and uh, going through this draft season i realized oh i need to tweak this i need to change that and it's a part of the process you know this is the uh, first year of this iteration of the program and and i'm excited to to build on it you know my my motto uh, every single day get 1% better, and I and I try and live by that. And I think uh, Clavon Chason could be a huge uh, stepping stone for me. With that being said, today I'm going to grade him with the program I have, which is only one grade for defensive ends uh, flat, and I plan on adding to that. And like I said, I think he could be a big part of that. Watching it on film, just me watching it, I think he might be a better Stand up outside linebacker than uh, than true uh, edge rusher with the the hand of the ground. Just just from watching it on film, I don't have a program that tells me that or that helps me with that. Uh, that is part of the, one of the goals I have for building this is getting to that point. I'm not there quite yet. Um, so I I see a guy who could be a uh, a watered down version of Jadavion Clowney. Uh, so, so what I mean by that is Jadavion Clowney is just this freak athlete, but he's more of like, he's not a true, uh, pass rusher, right? He's a, he's just this huge lengthy guy who can play the run really well, uh, plays the pass, definitely gets, uh, sacks and stuff, but, but he's not, you know, he, he's not the Joey Bosa's of the world. He's not, he, he matched up really well with JJ Watt when he was there for when he was healthy and that actually worked out for the few uh, games or maybe half a year that I, that those two players were on the field at the same time. Uh, it was two very different styles of defensive end, right? Uh, I, I think Jadavion Cloud is one of the best defensive players in the league, uh, but he doesn't have the stats to prove it, and right now he's struggling to find a contract that he thinks he deserves because of that. I mean, it's just the type of player he is, the the type of position he plays. Uh, that's just the nature of the beast. I think I think Clavon Chason is going to play that kind of position. Um, I I I will also say I get scared when people are talking about him as the number two defensive end in this class and maybe he is I haven't finished all the player all the players in this the defensive end class uh, certain things that I'll need to, to get through um, I, I get scared when people say that because you could say that and that can be true but also the connotation with that goes that he's going to be really good. He's going to be an automatic starter. I think there, I think there's a couple different ways his career could go, and there, there is a floor that I see that could be, you know, out of the NFL in the next four or five years. Like that wouldn't shock me. Um, and there's certain players, you know, you, you don't want to say that about a, a possible first round pick. I don't think he deserves to be a first round pick. Uh, I'll say that right now. I'll bury the. <laughs> I don't want to bury the lead with that. Uh, I really like this player. I think there's a lot of potential there. I don't see a first round pick uh, defensive end. And when you start talking about the, one of those day two defensive end players, they don't hit that often, and they just don't. That's just uh, that's just the nature of the beast with the draft. I mean, d defensive ends, specifically that position, the pass rusher, edge rusher type of guy, doesn't hit as often uh, in those you know day two, day three picks. Day one even is, is pretty iffy, you know, but but obviously when you're touted as a top-end talent, that, 
the average of hit and miss goes back to probably the mean with all other positions. Uh, so with all that being said, I just just understand that I'm saying I'm going to say a lot of good things about him, but I do have a little bit of caution, a little bit of like, ah, just don't know. Like, I like him. I think I, I if I could pick where he goes and the position he plays and, and exactly what he does in the next level, I'd feel really, really confident, but you don't get to do that. So I get to I get to sit here and make videos and put them on the internet and let them be around forever and not have all the information. So that's you know I, I'm gonna be wrong no matter what, right? When when we talk about this, but certain guys like this, I'm just scared. I just don't know which way to go. But with all that being said, let's let's skip all that. Let's get to the actual player, the film review, and right off the bat with the skill chart. Here we go. All right, so here is the skill chart for Clavon Chason. Uh, as you can see right off the bat, I, I do like the burst, the first step. Uh, he he does have some uh, some suddenness to his game. I uh, love his athleticism. I don't see an incredible amount of uh, bend and flexibility uh, in his game. He 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 does he has more flexibility than bend, I suppose. Uh, I would definitely say that, but I, I don't see it to the amount that that I'm maybe comfortable with. Uh, just looking at it right now, I, you know, I probably would put that number a little bit higher. I think that. Uh, you know, even just as I'm looking at, as I'm recording this right now, I'm kind of thinking, eh, is that is that right? I feel like I would probably like that at 3.7, 3.8, uh, and I might end up changing that. But I, overall, that that's that's where I put it when I made this grade and when I made this chart, I stuck with it. So, uh, yeah, 2.5. That's a negative grade. I don't like it. I, I have never heard that as a knock for him. So either I'm not seeing, I'm seeing something different than other people are, or I'm just different, you know, and I think that's okay. Um, with that being said, I, I don't think, I, this right here makes me think he's not an elite pass rusher. That's just not what he is. That's not what I see when I watch him. Um, I like his technique at times. Um, there's a lot to, that goes into this. Uh, certain things, uh, I like his hand usage at certain points. I don't like his hand usage at other points. Uh, sometimes I, I just feel like he's waving it around, and it's like sometimes he hits and he has power. He's a big guy, so when he when he makes contact and, and gets right, it's going to work out really well. But sometimes it just looks like he's you know, doing a lot of motion, making a lot of uh, movements and not really getting anywhere in the uh, pursuit and the tackle. Um, so so I, I I have questions with that. It's not just hand use, it's just everything. Uh, I, I don't, he uses a spin move a lot, and I don't have it in the film, but he uses a spin move, and it just never works, like, ever. And I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is about the spin move. Like, my theory is it, w it was really, really cool when he was in high school, and it worked in high school, and now he tries it in college, and it just doesn't work. So my theory is it's probably not going to work in the NFL. He's not – yeah, I just don't like it. I don't know. Um, and, okay, so hand usage right here is a little, obviously a spot of his own, like I said, uh, with technique. That kind of goes into it. Uh, but hand usage, like I said, I think I already said what I need to say about that. Don't, don't love it. Don't hate it. That is technically a plus grade, but – uh, right on the edge there. Leverage, I think he uses really well. I do have a clip where I'm going to show you uh, his his uh, release and his you know grab and release uh, uh, movement. I, I or his his uh, I, I think I'm going to show you a clip where where it accentuates how how good his leverage is. Uh, again, not perfect. That's not like a great grade. Uh, but it is a, a good grade. It's a good plus grade. Tackling, have no problem with him as a tackler. Uh, I think he is a really good read and react. I think he is, has a high IQ. Right off the bat, I, I think I buried the lead here. He wears number 18, and if you if you know anything about LSU and that program, 18 is a big number. They only give that to uh, the the guy who is is exemplary on and off the field. So I think uh, I think that's a great number. F you know that that gives you. I think if you're if you're watching him, you almost see the 18. You're like, man. That makes you feel better, right? That makes you feel like you're not nervous about the off-the-field crap. I didn't even have to research any off-the-field crap because he doesn't have 18 unless he's clean there. Um, so, so read and react. I know that's not specifically. Uh, <laughs> I know 18 doesn't specifically mean he has good read and react skills. I was more just saying all, all around good football IQ, and that does kind of uh, lend itself to the ability to quickly di dissect a play and realize where the play is going. Uh, I think he is very good against the run. Uh, he is built 
like a professional defensive end in the NFL. I love his frame. I mean, he's built exactly the way you would want him to be built. Uh, he has good play strength. Uh, I'm, I'm fine with that. Uh, but yeah, there you go. That is his skill chart. We will skip right ahead to the uh, film portion of this video. All right, so here we are with the Clavon Chase on film, uh, and you'll have to bear with me a little bit. Uh, when when it comes to defensive ends, when it comes to pass rush moves, you, you're going to have to slow it down and r really, really uh, dissect it. So just be prepared for that. Uh, right here he is at the top of your screen. Uh, gets kind of, uh, kind of pancaked. Pancaked, but what I love, and the f reason I showed this first is just you gotta love the motor. You, you gotta love uh, what he does. Uh, you know the the type of player he is. This this is why he gets uh, number eighteen. He's not gonna quit on a play. Uh, kind of uh, catches him in the backfield. You gotta love that. Uh, and here he is at the bottom of your screen right here. Uh, again, uh, just just a high motor. This is a great play. You don't. This is the type of play that doesn't really show up in your uh, in your charts. But it, I mean, he kind of ruined this play. He was able to uh, defeat the edge. Uh, the tackle right here was not able to set the edge. Um, just absolutely kind of blew, blew up the entire play. That's that's a playmaking play. That's that's the type of play that never gets shown up on the stat sheet. But that's that's uh, that's textbook. That's exactly what you want, uh, and that's how you uh, make in the NFL for a long time. Wait a minute. And, and right here, you're gonna see him. He's at the bottom of your screen again. You're, this almost looks like a drill that you would do with the combine. Watch this. Just good movement. I know it's nothing special. I I, I just like his movement skills. Uh, I like his. Uh, I like the prospect of him in coverage. Uh, and again, I think that's why I don't mind him at all as a, a true outside linebacker that puts his hand in the dirt from time to time. Uh, really, he, he's an athlete. You know, put him put him in the front seven somewhere. I, I'm fine with it. Again, uh, you know, not not a textbook tackle. <laughs> I'll give you that. And he does come completely uh, completely unblocked. So you'd like to think he can make this tackle. But I mean, man, that's that's uh, that's a big boy. Uh, Harris is, is a big dude, and he brought him down. You gotta gotta respect that. And here he is, right here at the bottom of your screen. This is where we're gonna really get into the uh, we're we're gonna really get into the pass rushing uh, aspect of his game. And right here, speed to power. I mean, you can't draw that up any better, right? Uh, converts speed to power really really well here, and uh, just pretty much gets one hand on the tackle and pushes him back. Uh, and gets the quarterback really, really quickly. If the quarterback didn't have that uh, that dig route to, to just drop it off to, he'd be fine. Right here, you're going to see him again against the same tackle in the same game. Uh, struggles again, uh, but gets two hands on him. Speed to power again. I, I think that's probably his best move. Uh, when he starts to get kind of cute, I think he struggles here. Again, you see his hands. This is one of the times where, like, I liked his hand usage, but it kind of seemed a little bit wild. Like, that seems a little bit late. Um, and let's let's slow it down to really show you what I'm talking about here. Um, let's show it down, slow it down to half speed. You see him right here at the top of your screen. Uh, just kind of looks like he jumps, and I mean, you know, I, I don't have a problem with it at all. I think it's I think it's a good play. It's a good rep by by every uh, every account, and he gets to the quarterback, so it's a very good rep. I'm not. I'm not uh, saying that it isn't at all. I just it's, it's it was really up and down with his uh, with his hand usage, which is why I wasn't able to give him a really really plus grade there. I'm gonna play it one more time just to give you guys a good look. So I think it's a really good rep, good use of the hands there. Yep, I like it. All right, so here we are. Yeah, same game. The, this is an example of hand usage that I don't love. I slowed it down just a little bit. Just kind of, just kind of seems like he's he's throwing his hands around. Doesn't seem like there's a uh, a plan to his plan or a, a a game plan to his action. Just kind of seems like he's flailing his arms almost. I don't love that. Like I said, that's part of the you know some good, some bad. And here you're gonna see him uh, come come inside on a. And uh, is able to bring the quarterback down. Uh, you know, I, I think that's more of a scheme, uh, scheme sack. Like, 
that could have been a lot of guys that get Stellinger here. Uh, he just happened to be there and has long arms to corral him and bring him down. Good sack. I'm not taking anything away from the guy. Uh, but, you know, it wasn't a true pass rush move. So here's maybe the not so good. I'm going to show you a rep where he kind of just gets uh, manhandled. Uh, you see him at the top of your screen. Uh, the tackle gets into a really good stance and just gets his hands on him, and there was just nothing he could do. Uh, wasn't really able to push him down, and the tackle really completed the play here. Again, another play where, uh, you know, actually that, that really wasn't bad. Uh, it just seems like he lost his balance, wasn't able to, to follow through. Uh, but is able doesn't let the tackle get his hands on him. Uh, the tackle is just barely able to get enough to push him down. All in all, I think you're finding a player who, who has a lot of potential. I, I don't see that quality in him that makes me think, man, this is a, a bona fide star at defensive end. I just don't see that. I think I see a good run blocker. I see a good player and, and someone who I would really like to get my hands on in the second or third in the second or third round, especially if I have uh, the type of offense or the type of scheme that could fit him really well, I'd love to see what he could do with the outside linebacker. I'd love to see him uh, in the same kind of role as a Kyle Van Noy, right? So Kyle Van Noy, originally drafted by the Lions, Lions did not use him properly, right? So he, you could tell that he had all the physical traits to be an effective linebacker, but they didn't use him right. Uh, kind of goes to the Patriots, reinvigorates his career. Patriots are obviously always going to use their, their guys exactly right, and then he gets paid by the Dolphins this offseason. Uh, Kyle Van Noy, I think, is, is, should be used a very similar way as uh, uh, Clavon Chason. I, I, think, I think that's a, kind of a good uh, comp, even though it's a different position, maybe even a different body type, but I'd, I'd love to see him uh, stand-up linebacker that, that's going to be really good against the run, uh, has the movement skills to play in coverage if he needs to, and can put his hand in the dirt as well. I think there, there's, a, there's a little bit of uh, variety of, uh, to his game, variety of what he can do. I probably wouldn't put him out there 25 times at defensive end and say get to the quarterback. I just I, I wouldn't expect him to beat uh, the upper echelon tackles in the NFL on a regular basis. Not, not with the the uh, techniques and the traits that he used in college. You know, obviously he could refine that, get better. He has all the physical tools to uh, get to that point where he could be that guy. He is not that guy today, and I will stand by that. I will, I strongly believe that that uh, for sure. Uh, everything else, you know, we'll see. I think his career could go a bunch of different ways. Exactly like I said at the uh, top of the show. Could go a lot of different ways, but you could say that about a lot of guys, and Clavon Chason is no different. Um, so here's his grade right here. 5.88 is his final grade, which is a draftable grade, which is kind of, uh, for me, it's in that third-round range, uh, so it's not it's not an elite grade, obviously. Uh, it, I still think he's day two, day th or I, I, do, I do think he belongs in the day two conversation. I don't think he belongs uh, in the first round. But if he gets drafted in the first round by a team that knows how to use him, that's not going to be a bad pick at all, especially if you're needing defensive end. I would hate I would hate to see him go to a team that is trying to put a square peg in a round hole uh, just because they need a defensive end and they think maybe he could work out. I'd hate to see that happen to him because uh, there is a lot of potential with this player. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Uh, comment down below if there's anybody else you would like me to do a draft profile on. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Peace out. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Peace out.